this one promises to be truly special. Last week, we celebrated the birthday of one of the most iconic figures in Jamaican music. And so today, what we're going to be doing is to look at the life of this incredible man. And what we have assembled here today is a panel of the very best. People who know this man that we are going to be talking about so well. They have served in various capacities as managers, as mentors, as friends, as producers, as promoters. I mean, they represent everything as far as roles are concerned and they know him very, very well. Today, we look at the life and the music of the man I love to call Emmanuel because that's his middle name. Dennis Emmanuel Brown, son of Arthur. This man is rated as the top Jamaican singer by Rolling Stone magazine. This man has been imitated by more Jamaican artists than any other. Dennis Emmanuel Brown. This is a man who is a most prolific hit maker and he is the favorite Jamaican artist from none other than Bob Marley himself. And the people here, they can attest to it. This is not guesswork. So, for the next three hours, this is going to be one incredible ride as we interrogate, as we analyze, as we look at the life of Dennis Emmanuel Brown. With me here today is a man who has spent a lot of time, would spend a lot of time with Dennis Brown. He served in capacity of manager for Dennis and they did a lot of work together. He has numerous stories talking about tour manager, artist manager, and now author, Copeland Forbes. And <laughs> Copeland is one of these legendary figures we have in the music business. And he has quite a few stories about Dennis because Dennis was an unusual person. Of course, you have a man who was there with Dennis through thick and thin, his brethren, a man who they were on the road together. They, they, they worked together in various capacities. Talking about another stalwart in the Jamaican music industry, Mr. Trevor Lego Douglas. I just call him Lego and we're just done with that. And we'll be joined later by Dr. Howard and people like Tommy Cohen and Jack Scorpio. So this promises to be one roller coaster it's gonna be a beautiful ride musically speaking now now let me tell you something people like lego and people like copeland they saw the side of dennis that many of us would not have seen because they were his friends they were his co-workers <laughs> they were with him all the time uh I, in, in fact some of them would have known him from his childhood i think copeland and and and, and lego would have, would have known him from very very early um which one of you knew um dennis from his childhood can you say lego or, or copeland which one want to want to start yeah can i know him from my youth when pakai i came from him show you know go, go, go. When I chuck him on the dance hall in there. Now, chuck him all lawn, we need to explain to people, was on Wellington Street in Western Kingston. And it was operated then by the man who would later become Prime Minister, um, Mr. Edward Siaga. Yeah, it was, it was about two people on it. And then Mr. Mr. Um, yeah, Bradley and Connelly, and they do on it. And I believe Junior Lincoln family had something to do with it along the way. 
before Mr. Siaka. Mr. Siaka. Right. So it was a boxing gym, you know. Right. And a dance hall. And a dance hall. Yeah. And many talents were honed in Chocomo Lawn. Would you agree? Yes. Yeah, man. Mm. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Jimmy Cliff. Techniques. The original with Slim Smith. Ken Boo, too. Mm. Stranger, Stranger Paul. Paul. Yeah, yeah. One of the yeah. man, them used to... Chocomo was the place to go at night time going out and... You know, see it? So, you would say that Chocomo basically was playing the role of what an Edwin Spark had played earlier in developing Jamaican acts. Yeah, because, all right, for instance, Prince Buster, theme song used to play the Conce, Admiral Brian, Sir Percy. And them songs they used to play there at night time. Every Sunday night, every Friday night, you'd have a different thing until it became the political headquarters of Mr. Siaga, you know? Right. And Dennis was an integral part of what was happening there. But he would have been very small. He would have been very young when when he was when he was going to mm, yeah. uh, Chocomolon, wouldn't he? Yeah, yeah. Pakai Fino to call him. Right. I'm giving care of Dennis on his shoulder. Pa on his shoulder. Yes. All right. So, Copeland, you knew Dennis when he was pretty young. How did you encounter him? Well, you wouldn't believe it, you know. A lot of people don't even know this part that I'm going to talk about. I was a Boy Scout at All Saints uh, School, right? And then Dennis was a Cub Scout at Central Branch, right? Now, my mother used to work over at Central Branch, you know. Um, she had 12 of us, so she worked at Chateau Park School, All Saints School, and Central Branch. You know, so going there, I go to the, the, the meetings, and he was a Cub. And they always call us because we are senior. Um, down at All Saints to come around there, you know, and um, brief and give them, you know, some encouragement because they moved from a cub to a scout. Right. So he was much. He was much smaller than. He was much smaller. He was about nine year old, I think, at that time. Right. Right. And my next encounter with him, you know, after that, you know, was um, I was in a band named the Caravans on Galloway Road, next door to um, Bobby Aiken's place, and there was the band named Caravans was a. Nice band, you know, even Frederick Quaid from the, um, the, uh, the the Techniques was a bass player inside there, you know, and then Frederick migrated, and then they said they have a young singer who's coming into the band, but they changed the name of the band from Caravans to the Falcons, right? And then they said he was the lead singer for the band. My brother-in-law, my sister's husband, Ron Wilson, trombonist Ron Wilson, was in the army at the time, was a band leader for the band, and then he said, yes, that little you talk a lot about it. So he knows you from way back that, when. At that time, you were living in, in the States? When, when, when no, Ron no, was this was in the 60s, in the 60s, okay. late 60s. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right? Just before I migrated. Okay. You know? it, it, but before I migrated, the last time I actually seen him, I think it was now, Baron Lee used to keep a lot of stage shows, right, at Carve Theatre on the holidays. And there's a song that... um. That Derek Ariat recorded. That was the nuggets for the needy. Right. Lips yeah. of wine? Yeah, no, no, no. no. Derek, Derek Ariat. Der, 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 Derek Ariat recorded a song named Solomon. Solomon was the right. wisest man. Yes. Mm. So when Dennis was singing that song because he did silhouettes for Gregory, for uh, Henry Gregory, for Derek, and he was singing that song, the minute he gets to the part, it's a girl leaves soul alone, come I'm, I'm a big man in this town. Byron Lee would just bring down the band south and him say, Cause I'm a little man in this town and the place just erupt. Mm. You know, guys just to see this little youth there, you know, um yes, expanding better, yes, and better. talking at that time, you know, it was something special, you know. So yes, those are the yes, early days that I can remember yes, about no, Dennis. No, and no, this no, was no, before no, he started no. singing. Okay, uh, we're going to break for, for, for the races shortly. We're joined by Dr. Dennis Howard, and uh, we're reminiscing on the, the life of Dennis Emmanuel Brown, uh, and we're hearing a little bit about the early years, the, 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 the time at uh, Central Branch School. Now, for those of us who might not be up to date in our geography, Central Branch School is actually on Sly Pen Road, mm -hmm. um, just below Torrington Bridge, um, that, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, and, yeah. And, 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 and not too far from the famous comprehensive clinic, <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that a lot of people used to retreat to, yes. to um, solve um, all, all these little issues that they might have. <laughs> 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 when you get knocked, you know, 
Yeah. yeah musically, bro, speak line off. <laughs> <laughs> musically speaking, that's the program. You talk about a stellar panel. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> yes. Musically speaking, Clyde McKenzie here with you. And I told you this one is going to be special. We have in studio Dr. Dennis Howard, ethnomusicologist, author, and so many other things, including sound system operator. He likes to boast about that, that he's a sound system operator. And he is broadcaster and so many other things. And, you know, all of these people are accomplished, a Lego, a, a Copeland. These people are integral to the development of modern Jamaican music. And they have all kinds of stories. Today we're talking about Dennis Emmanuel Brown. And I am very pleased to be talking to these gentlemen who know this man very well, who have great perspectives on the life and music of this man. Now, Dr. Howard, I want you to situate Dennis Brown for me in terms of his significance or as the the people in business school would say, what is his value proposition? What did he bring to the table that is different and unique? Ah, uh, just sheer talent. Dennis Brown was one of what we call a creative genius because we use that word very lightly and everybody's a genius and everybody's an icon. But very few can stand up to, to those names. And Dennis Brown certainly can. Dennis Brown is an icon in terms of being the template, in terms of vocal presentation. Everybody wanted to be like Dennis Brown. In fact, I can list about 30 top famous artists that started out sounding like... Including like, like, Richie Stevens. Including Richie Stevens, Barry Salmon, including <coughs> Frankie, Paul. Uh, Frankie, Frankie Paul, Paul, including... Michael Rose. Michael Rose. Yes. Jazz, uh, and we can go down the line. Yeah. And, every, and even those who weren't able to to copy his, his tone. They certainly copied his style and and he was a template after after Alton Ellis, who interestingly was influenced De Dennis Brown was influenced by Al Alton Ellis. Look at here. That, that's that's and, and, straight and Alton also Ellis. he would have been influenced by Delroy Wilson. Absolutely. Yeah. But yes, but so. By the time it come round to Dennis Brown, Dennis Brown became the template for singing, not only in Jamaica, but abroad, because a lot of people started to, to, to adopt some of the styling of Dennis Brown, because Dennis Brown was unique. A lot of, a lot of the earlier singers used to ape the temptations so people used to try to sound like Eddie Kendricks. Mm -hmm. So everybody with a falsetto, like mm -hmm. Pat Kelly, Slim Smith, and all of these. Mm -hmm. Then some people had the baritone, so they used to to to, to fashion themselves. And, and even the whalers too you, you, were, yeah, were, were guilty of, them, of that. Yes, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's, it's not even guilty. It's no, just, no, it's just it you just, just go t until you find it's your just voice. Influence. Too. It's yes. influence. Yes. And, yes. And, and, uh, and people, pe great talent always attracted and influenced by great talent. Mm -hmm. It's simple as that. It's nothing to take. Away no, from, not from to them. detract from your thing. Yeah. And, and, and you sometimes do that until you find your own voice. But Dennis Brown, no. <laughs> Dennis Brown, influenced primarily by by the R and B scene in 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 Jamaica, in America, plus the people like Alton and 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 and, and Delroy. But by the time it come round to Dennis Brown finding his voice, which was very very quick, it was original in terms of the the phrasing, in terms of the cadence in terms of the tone and just the ability to be a, a brilliant singer. That that was Dennis. So in terms of Dennis Brown being the template in terms of of, of this the singer, he's also a massive hit maker. Hits after hits after hits after hits after hits. You know? A great performer. Brilliant, yeah, yeah. brilliant performer. Style, you know? Brilliant performer. And also uh, 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 a a a a very capable musician too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but so 
I think we want to stick a pin here yeah. because you, you you made the point that he was a genius, yeah. and 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 you 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 made the important point that a lot of people we use the word loosely. Mm. Um, genius really means you provide new realities. It doesn't mean you're brilliant. It means you create new realities. In other words, you do something that nobody else does. And I think that's what Dennis is saying, that he, Dennis Brown was unique. Mm -hmm. But he was also a prodigy. Yeah, hello. He yeah, was a prodigy. Yeah. So, so he was explaining the so, project. Yes, the so, project yes. So, so, so he was a prodigy and he was a genius. So he was a brilliant yeah. and he was a genius. So apart from being a competent and very good musician, a, a, a brilliant songwriter, <laughs> was another one of his thing that a lot of people don't even factor in sometimes because let me tell you then his voice was so good and his presence was so wicked that we kind of underestimate him as a singer a songwriter you know and the man was a brilliant songwriter oh, the promised land love has found its way caress me girl revolution and i can go on and go on and go on uh malcolm x all of his revolutionary songs that 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 sometimes we we see more as the the nice the lover ballad, the lover love, love, love thing, lover 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 but as some brilliant brilliant song whip them jaja whip them here i come cassandra westbound train and we can go on and go on and go on and most people don't even you know when it, when you look at when it analyzes is 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 songwriting com contribution exceptional so, you're saying here it was that this man caught the thing very early, found mm -hmm. his voice very yeah. early. Yeah. Now, one of the first songs that he recorded was with Derek Harriet, mm -hmm. Lips of Wine. It yeah. was not his first release. Mm. Lips of Wine? Lips yeah. of Wine is but his Derek? first. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's the first. That's his first mm -hmm. recording. The no, first, not the first recording. No, the first. The first. Prominent, because, yeah, because, because he, he had, had more before. No, I used to read Lips of Wine, you know, was originally another song. Another right? song, yes. Yeah. It, it was another song. I, I, I can't remember the name of the song, but and then, then changed and the lyrics change, yes, to, lips, uh, of to lips of Wine. Yeah. But that, but but that, so we're going to play Lips of Wine, and then we're going to play what would be Dennis's first hit, which was No Man is an Island, yeah, which, was, which was with Clement Dodd. Yeah. So the first one is with Derek Harriet, Lips of Wine, and then the second one is with Sir Coxon the Great. Well, I've been thinking lately much of my baby thinking how she needs me don't seem to know if she's feeling so bad, feeling so bad, feeling so bad. Maybe it's better if I forget her, let her go on. How I long to hold her tenderly. How I long Maybe someday she will change 
Lips of Wine, a classic, one of the earliest from Dennis Emmanuel Brown. You listen to the musicianship in that, in that Oh, song? the guitar. Brilliant, brilliant stuff, yeah. man. Derek, Derek at, at, his, at his speak, as Copeland just said, that these days, that in, the, in that period, Derek was, you know, shutting. A King Street yeah. and Beethoven Street. All right. I want, <laughs> yeah, I want you to talk to locate, I mean, geographically, mm -hmm. where a lot of this was taking place. Because Dennis has his origins on Orange Street. That's where most people yeah. know of Dennis Brown from, the mm -hmm. big yard. Mm -hmm. right? Him born oh. above the Somerset 120 yeah, and then come down. Yes, the because yeah. that's 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 a famous yard because people like Denzel Lang mm. lived in that yard mm. at, 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 at one point. At one point. Yeah. And, um, but you hear a lot about Dennis's father, Arthur Brown, mm -hmm. was a civil servant. He was actor. an actor, an actor. And, and, and all of this. But you don't hear a lot about his mom. mom. And Lego. I want you to tell me about his mom because yeah. my mother, my mother knew his mom very well. I never knew his mother, you know. No, no, I never she, knew his no mother. because his mother, my mother told me that his mother was a very good singer. In fact, she sang, and his grandmother sang with the Salvation Army, mm -hmm. and they were very, very, very excellent singers. So I don't know if if the, the singing. He maybe inherited it from that side. But I mean, the performance side, maybe he got it from his no, father. No, but your father could have sing yeah, too, you know. <laughs> yeah, Arthur Brown. Yeah, man, Arthur could have sing too. But, and, you, but so, there's something that I experienced living in New York. You know, this guy was living next door to me. He named Man Man. Oh, that's his brother. Right. And then when yeah. he told me that he was Dennis Brown's brother. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, he was, was in life. He was in life in Hopeful Village. Yeah, and those, those, right. those, those plays, know, yes. Yeah. And that's that was one of the first family members that I actually knew until I later knew um, Leroy, who traveled with him. But the other the other ones, them I didn't really know. Yeah, my sister down here to know in the 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 prison ward, I believe she is, and his brother just came down from New York. His youngest brother. But he lived, he just went up about three, four years ago, but I don't know what he's here. Mm -hmm. So, so you, did, you didn't have much experience, you didn't have any experience with his mom? No, no, no. I no. never even knew his mom. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of strange that. Uh, yes, because it, because, because Jamaica, remember, you know, in a Jamaica where we so much of folk yes. centered around mothers. Yes, the mothers. It's dominate. amazing how nobody has a lot of information, information on, about on, his mother. Yes, yes. Yeah. You know, and. Um, but it is, as you said, you know. His mother must have died relatively uh, early. Early, very early. Yes, she did. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Yes. I think so. I heard that story, you know? Um, the, 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 there is the, the, the question of his polish, mm -hmm. because Dennis was extremely polished. Yeah. When you listen to an interview, you don't hear much by way of, what would I say? I mean, he was very formal in, yeah. in his delivery. Yeah, it was part of the colonial experience, no, Central Branch, and all of these uh, schools in you know, a Central Aweishus, Holy Family, yeah. all of the Saint Anne's, All of these schools had a, a tradition of elocution and speaking properly and all of them stuff there. So it 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 wasn't. And then, it's, uh, uh, of course, his father, right, uh, as, as a civil experience. servant. Yeah, you yeah. know, look on Dennis writing. Mm. Yes. When Dennis writes it oh like he prints. Yeah. Yes, yes. He had one of the best When Dennis best, best and writing. Yeah. Greg Rice actually, you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. part of the school system. Yeah. The whole way, the whole yeah. way come out. All I, scenes. You know. Right. All then, scenes. Then, yeah. All scenes. Yeah. Holy yeah. Family, yeah. St. Aloysius, yeah. Calabar yeah. Primary. Yeah. Aloysius, too. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know. And the, the, the level, the quality of the, the despite the, 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 the what you call it? Miseducation in terms of the colonial, uh, the colonial past and revering the British as superior and all of that. Fun, on a fundamental level in terms the of basics, the literacy rudiment. yes, yes. And, and, and humorous mathematics and arithmetic. Yes. You get good teaching. You got, you got a good foundation, good foundation and you had yeah. good teachers at that time. Yeah, yeah. You know, that, that, that projected that. I remember my primary school teachers, Miss Clunis, Miss Samuels, and, and, and Miss, Mrs. Mrs. Brown, all well, of these well, people. The, the brightest people at that time, yeah. if you were poor and black, 
you had to go into teaching. So, I mean, you mm -hmm. didn't go into medicine and all of that because yeah. there were very few opportunities at that time right. nursing, for you. And nursing, so, and nursing, yeah. so, the yeah. so at th that is why we got the best and brightest minds going into teaching mm -hmm. at that time. Yeah. So, I mean, no is a, is, is a different thing because, I mean, you have all of these other professions that siphon all these people away. Mm. But Dennis also was a very gentle soul. Um, because you know, <laughs> I I only saw him angry one time in my entire life. I've seen him uh, from from, and I know Dennis Brown from Dennis Brown. I hung out down at ninety on Orange Street and as a little youth, and me I pass him. And every day him out, yeah, when me I come from school, yeah. Dennis Brown, they right out of the front. With that chance, yeah, 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 and, and Lego. Lean up my uh, bell button. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> always, always out there. <laughs> with that smile, we, you know. We, we, no, no, you, you can guarantee to see Dennis Brown. I'll tell you something about and Dennis. only one time you ever see him angry. You, one time. You know, if you want Dennis Vex, I can tell you. Those trouble one of him, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. there, 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 there was a lot of ways you could get, you could get yeah. him angry then. But, but, yeah. but, no. I tell you, if, 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 if Dennis Brown rang you, you can know gently is when him come apologize. You must have, man. Jesus. I've seen it all the time. Well, make me when tell you. Him, tell you. When him rang yeah. you, come up and apologize. apologize. My brother. <laughs> no, I, 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 got, I, got, I, remember, I remember a situation <laughs> once with Dennis in, in Cayman. We did yeah. a show there. Hmm. And I was involved with the promotion of the show. Hmm. And Dennis came in the morning. He should have come in about four days before. But he came in the morning. We had to fly him through Miami. And when I knocked on the door, I knocked for about an hour. And Dennis didn't come out of the room. <laughs> and when he finally came out, he was, my brother, <laughs> how are you? Peace. Uh, I mean, he was the, and, and all smiles. And when he came downstairs, he went back into his room and spent yeah. another hour. And we managed to get him out. And when he came down, every, you, you couldn't be angry with him. Yeah. Because he would disarm you at all times mm. because of his manner. Yeah, man. yeah. I, I, I had so many experiences with him, especially when he does a show, a show and uh, or he's late. And he doesn't even give me a chance. I am mad. And I said, Maya, when I see him, I'm going to give him a right hand, you know. And the minute I see him, oh, a Baba Janoy, boss, oh, yeah. I effed up. I effed up. I should be whipped with many stripes. <laughs> I must be whipped with many stripes. <laughs> and, and then this is a smile. <laughs> hey, hey, some legendary stories about promoters, you know, take out gun and I say, oh, you saw when we see this? I peer about him all get, you know. When him come in, I say, gentlemen, how are you? <laughs> said, hey Dennis, chow, chow, chow. let's go on about your business here. And so. you start shaking hands. <laughs> shake yeah, hands. Yeah, yeah. Because he loves to shake hands like when, like when, him, when, him, when him up here. Yeah. My I, brother, I, I, I pray, pray thee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let me tell you, you talk about fandom, they them can tell you. I have never seen anybody, not even Bob Marley, that when he entered a space, he had so much people following like disciples. Oh, Dennis sorry. Brown come in our area, you just say about 500 people start surrounding him. <laughs> well, and they just walk with him. And if him stop, them stop. I, I don't see nothing close to that ever. Well, I had a, I had a session in England with him, right? For 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 and records yeah. to do some demos. Yeah. And they sent a limo for him at, at Arrington Guys. Now we couldn't find him. So I said to Dean and Lyle to them, let's go to the studio. And I'm over at AM. And we go to the studio and wait, 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 wait. From 5 to 10, the studio booked to the demos. Then it's turned up about 9.15 with about 500 people, right? Yeah. With him, I have to say, Castro, <laughs> this is not a concert. <laughs> He's going to be doing demos for his Rick new label. You know, can he get them out? And it was held. I said, so he's come like the Pied Piper. Yeah, man. You know, <laughs> Manuel, man. Manuel Latino. Yeah. I so, remember uh, he told me the first time he get some money, did a song for Prince Buster. And go down there and Buster have no jukebox. And Buster full up in pocket, they have a pure silver. <laughs> <laughs> and D Brown go for the him say, Lego, a nice idea. Everybody in the big yard, everybody up to eat party, you know. <laughs> 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 up a sunshine restaurant, you know. Right. So everybody was at North party. Street and Orange Street, the <laughs> corner. The south the southwest corner. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very famous for, for its chicken. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And party. Yes. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> now, Dennis Copeland, you 
would have a few incidents where um, De Dennis would not turn up uh, as assigned. Um, you have a particular story about um, his taking a tape to A and M, uh, and what happened. Can you can you give that can you give that story? Well, I'm going to wrap it up fast. Wrap it up After fast. that session I just spoke about to do some demos, you want to come up with one song. You know, China give him one and Boopy give him one. So go over to A&M and they say, oh no. He said, oh, um, Sangi, I have a whole bunch of Sangi wrote for Where's Sangi? In Jamaica. Okay, we're going to send it to Jamaica. They send me and him to Jamaica, right? I was up by Jimmy Clipper and two days time comes, say, yes, boss, I get it. I say, all right. I took him to the airport, go up on the waving gallery, wave. I see the plane take off. You know, I call a and I call everybody in England, Dennis is on his way, right? I feel good now because we're getting a new record deal. Because I had just secured the company of Alex Sapkin mm. to produce a new album for him after we got the Joe Gibbs thing out of the way, you know. He went and called, oh, he sent the, the, the rolls to the airport and he's not there. Call Cash, you know him don't show up. I said, what? In a nutshell, I said, oh, I remember the plane go via Miami and then go to London. So I know a friend in Miami that him always hang out with. I called the person. Yes, you know, I was at the airport with him, you know. And um, I sit on there, talk with him, and tell him cash the British plane, and he went to England. He's not in England. Call Maya. Nobody know where he is. So what I have to do now, you know, when we get quick, because I do the first turn of the book, you know, um, I call a friend of mine in New York, in, in Miami, and I say, listen, you know this address? Yeah, man, it's Northwest. I said, dress up like a delivery man, like a delivery in a package, but don't put on it Dennis Brown, put Danish Brown. He said, what can I get? I said, I just want to know if he's there. Because if he's there, he can't give the package. Because I'm doing him Danish, bro. Mm. You know, but he just said, all right. And he went, one hour later, he called me, we pure laughing. I said, what happened? Boss, you saw when I ring the bell? Guess who opened the door? The man himself. <laughs> I said, hold on, what you say? <laughs> He said, I'm on a blue shorts and a red, green, and gold mesh marina. <laughs> you know? I said, my gosh. He said, all right. I don't know what to do now. I decided to call him. I call back the house, the person answer. But I told you already that he gone to British Airways. I said, listen, he's about to lose his recording contract. Dennis is right there watching TV. What you talking about? I said, I want a blue shirt and a great green and gold mesh marina. <laughs> <laughs> Me, you're a silence. I said, hello? Hello? <laughs> Just a minute. <laughs> on the phone, and you cock up in the background and thing, and so on. And when you take a start now, before I'm saying the word, that's what I'm saying. Ababa Janoi, boss, I should be whip whip many stripes. I effed up, I effed up. Well, you can't quarrel now. <laughs> Dennis, catch the flight tonight to London. <laughs> right? And it's all right, boss. I knew he was going to do it now, you know, because I felt it through the phone. He did. They picked him up. Oh, God, I feel so good. A and them said, yes, he's there. Dick Green, I think was his name. When he called me, he said, Mr. Porres, are you people playing some kind of games? I said, what are you talking about? Dennis Broderick has sat here. And he put it in the machine. I bring the a &R staff, the notebooks to make notes of, you know. And all I can hear is some pots and pans in the background. <laughs> like there was a smoking session. And one guy said, my turn, no, don't done it. <laughs> so I said, give him the phone. Boss, he look like a pick up the wrong case. <laughs> I don't know what to do. <laughs> This that this, led that led to me losing the contract. Uh, <laughs> this is musically speaking, lessons and stories of the great Dennis Emmanuel Brown. And I tell you, we have a panel assembled Brian McKenzie here yeah, with some of the best some, some of the good good, good some of the best. Dr. Dennis Howard, uh, Trevor Lego Douglas, and Copeland Forbes. We we're gonna go to the track and we'll be right back. <laughs> We're back, Clyde McKenzie here, and this is Musically Speaking with a stellar panel talking about Dennis Brown, Dr. Dennis Howard. The one is in Georgia, the one. Talking about <laughs> at the races there, uh, talking about uh, Lego, the great Trevor Douglas, and the great Copeland Ford. Jesus Force. I mean, great, man. I'm not great, man. Jesus, uh, Jesus <laughs> great. You hear, you hear that? I mean, you know, you know, these men are modest men, but their accomplishments are enormous so you're a great man stop talk <laughs> yeah just tell him for me yeah. so we've been talking about dennis brown 
and uh, we t we've been talking about the early years, you know, Lips of Wine and Chocomo Lawn and all the, 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 the early education at Central Branch um, School, which incidentally is a school that produced uh, other musicians like I, I think Marjorie Wiley is a, is a, is a, is a product of, of Central Branch mm -hmm. School, Arnold Dean uh, Wiley as she's, mm -hmm. she's called. Uh, and, uh, you know, those schools, what is interesting, many of those schools in Western Kingston, and Copeland can attest to that, and any one of you here can attest to that, many of these schools, All Saints, Central Branch, Chateau Park, Chateau Park, Park. Mm -hmm. they, they, they produced a lot of Jamaican artists, mm -hmm. right? I mean, Chateau mm -hmm. Park, you went to Chateau Park, um, yeah. Copeland. Yeah, during who, my time at Chateau Park, you have myself, Marcel Griffiths, Bunny Whaler, Bob the man entire did. techniques, Bob the original one with Bob Slim Smith. Right you no, know, but Mark Marshall used to live across the street, yeah. right? Um, <clears throat> Money father and I um, used to get at the bar down Oxford Street. You know, Marshall Griffiths and my father. My father was a caretaker at Chitula Park School. My mother worked there too. Miss um, Edith Dalton James, our uh, headmistress, was like my second mother there. You know, so that school turned out a lot of singers. Then when we leave at 11, some went to All Saints. And some went to Kingston Senior, which is now Kingston Junior Secondary. Mm -hmm. Or Kingston yeah. Second, Kingston, Kingston High. Yeah, it's yeah. not Kingston it, High. Yeah, it used to be Kingston Senior, but I think it changed. No, it's a Kingston high. It's Kingston, Kingston High. High School. Kingston yeah. High now, you know. So a bunch, and not just um, entertainers, you know. Michelle Mowat, who is now the wife of Douglas Serene, uh, uh, Senator Douglas Serene, she was a ballet dancer at Chateau Park School, right? And she was pe impeccable. You know, and um, there were people like um, one and two of the goodisons would pass through, but all saints, everybody went. But they when I went to all saints, you know, um, Gregory is park. all saints, and Gregory was at all saints, it's too. Green, the all saints, right? Um, politician, they don't get the name again. Oh, Desmond, Desmond, all saints, mm -hmm. too. Yeah, man. okay. So, all saints, this, this, all of these schools were in, I would say. A half a mile radius of each other, yeah, as yeah, a group. Yeah, 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 yes, yeah, half a mile. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Denham Town, Trench Town, right. All Saints, um, Chateau Park, Kingston, Park Senior. Kingston Senior. Yeah, yeah. I want Saint Annes. Saint Annes, yes. yes. Saint Annes. That's yeah. my school. That's my. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's my. That's my, yeah. my primary and then infant school. Further down on the east, you have Holy Family. You have Saint Aloysius. You have the congregation. Yeah. Con congregational. Yeah. The congregational. Yeah. Congregational used to feed into yeah. Central Branch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our, our and yeah. All Saints. And All Yes, yeah. right. I have okay. the Little All Saints. Mm -hmm. yeah, they kind of go congregational. Mm -hmm. Our we the got Little All Saints was West Street. Street, Street, Street yes, yeah, right yeah, before the church. Mm -hmm. yeah, right, right across from the church. Behind the hospital. Yes, behind the hospital. And you have the Ebenezer and Dumpling Squeezer. Ebenezer. That was on Sp off Spanish. Yes, off Spanish. Yes, yes. off Spanish. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yes. Dumpling squeeze the pot water so, thing, so, the bun bun scrape. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so they were all within walking distance, you know. Yeah. Of, you know and you that, is where, that, is where, that is where the music developed. Yeah. In Jamaica. Yes. Well, you know, the amazing thing, <laughs> the amazing thing on one level, in, in, in the society at that time, all of our culture was kind of, at the periphery. Nobody know want to know about the culture because of this colonial mindset and mentality mm -hmm. that everything else, everything that we do, don't make any sense. Mm -hmm. But it, it, it is amazing that the school system still facilitated the kind of, 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 of talent and focus on, on the arts because I wouldn't say it's necessarily a Jamaican cultural Perspective. Yeah, you had but Lloyd Hall, you had the, Lloyd Hall, you had people like Lloyd yeah. Hall coming over the radio, ta 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 ta. And, and about about uh, and, and because of that, it 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 you know created the environment that people used to to be involved in the arts, got the training, got the exposure, and then when we started to accept our own culture, we just transferred those skills. Into right. our you, culture. That's, a, that's, a, that's an important we, point. Yeah, because at one time, yeah, you know, true. one time, you know, them can't tell you. Everybody wanted to be like Tom Jones, Engelbert, mm. Tom yeah, Pedic, yeah, yeah. Frank Sinatra. Seriously, everybody, everybody was on. Everybody Martin. never. Oh, the Jamaican Dean Martin, the <laughs> yeah, Jamaican yeah, yeah. Andy Williams, yeah. the Jamaican yeah. Sinatra. Can you know. All of those two, what's them, them two never get on the radio. Really, yeah. No, no, yeah. And, and we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about that when we come back. 
No man is an island. Yes, this one was done for the legendary Sir Cox and Dodd. It is a song written by Alex Kramer originally. Uh, we used to sing that song in the school yeah. here. Mm -hmm. And I think Dennis, he did his version of the song. No, but, it, but before you got here, I, the Alex Kramer original, which was the done from no, the meditation on, no, no, of John Don. Yeah, man. So the 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 the, the it, it Alex wrote it with John Whit Whitney. Whitney, yes. Yeah, and it and it's taken from a paragraph from the poem, John Donne, the poem. Meditation of yeah, John yeah, Donne. Yeah. Yes. Seventeen meditations by John Donne. Yes. Uh, that and that is from when? Sixteen sixteen twenty five or sixteen yeah, yeah, some, yeah. somewhere around there. Yeah time, man, yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the now the Van Dykes, the Van Dykes uh, yes, R and B group yes. adopted it and had some lyrics that would relate to the black experience. Yes. So that's why you can live in this world all, all by, by yourself. yourself. Yes. And so that was the version that, that Dennis yes. Brown covered. It was, it was a beautiful, the, the, the original was beautiful. Yeah, man. And, yeah, and, yeah. And Dennis, yeah. Dennis did and in a fact, rendition. In fact, a couple of other groups, like white groups, did versions yes, of it before, many, before. Yeah, many groups yeah, did it before. Yeah, before, yeah, before. Yes. Yeah, but the, the Van Dyke's version yes. is the one that, that, that he yes. covered. Yes, right, right. Yeah. So, so that is important because it's it wasn't an original mm -hmm. by Dennis, but, but it nonetheless it he gave it an original but flavor. Let me tell you something. And that's, that's before 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 Whitney Houston took over to, uh, had the repetition of taking over people's song. A Jamaica that. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> took over everybody. All right, give, Bob you, an, the give, give you an example. Bob give Marley, give the you an example. Let me give some classic examples. No man is an island. Dennis Brown. By the time Dennis Brown sing it, it associated with him. Nobody remembers the Van Dykes. Uh, a, a love I can feel. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, that started out as the first recording of the Temptations, which was a flop, and mm -hmm. it was called A Love I Can See. And by and in a, in the song, they said, "I want a love I can see." But in at one of the one of the one of the verses, they say, "I want a love I can feel." Cox and change it round to the I love I can feel and John will take it over. Everything I own. Everything I own. Bread. Ken Boot. Yes. You know, nobody, silver no, words. Nobody, nobody, remembers, nobody remembers the bread version the, the, yeah. in Jamaica. Yeah. <laughs> silver words. Another yes. one. Uh, yes. uh, that, that was done by, uh, what's his name again? Is a, is a guy, is, that guy's story is amazing, but we can't uh, talk it right as I know. But silver words is not, a, not, a, no, not, not a, an original. No, not an original. But yes. by the time, Dennis Brown is the man who put it upon, I mean, Ken, Ken Booth is the man who put it upon yes. yeah, the chart. Yes. You know? And Dennis Brown, one of my, a couple of my favorite Dennis Brown is not original. I mean, one of my favorite. Old Man Wichita River. River. Wichita Lineman. Wichita a, Lineman. Yeah, yeah. Old Man River. <laughs> yeah, you know? Uh, I mean, poison. Yeah. Right in, the, in the later days, in the, in the, in yes. the 90s. Yes. His, his version of Poison with, 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 with Brian and Tony Gold. Yes. It's amazing. The intro where, where Dennis Brown doing that. Listen here. Yeah. I make up some weird sound. That alone, done the, before the song even start, the, because, the song is because amazing. Because we're going to talk about his adaptability. Yeah. Because he was able even to transition into dance hall. Mm -hmm. and, and we need to talk about that as part of his legacy and, and his growth and his development. Because one of the things it seems is that he was an experimenter and he moved from producer to producer. But he seemed to have spent a considerable amount of time with Nine Wholeness. Yeah. Um, they 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 worked together. Um, they, they 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 shared a house together. Um, I want you to talk to you 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 gentlemen talk about the the Nine experience and what that meant as far as the Dennis Brown career is concerned. Lego, you going you gonna take the take take the first shot at it? Yeah, I could say she said Nine. And Dennis now, Nani loved Dennis. And Nani, I remember Nani first thing in you know, Bonnie Lee gave my children, you know, <laughs> and him put it out and eat it. And then, then this Nani, you know, and take it back like him teeth. <laughs> 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 yeah. And Nani was an effort, man. No, Nani was an effort, you. Well, Striker and, 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 and Nani have one of these 
greatest history. Yes, it's mm-hmm. an amazing. Today we are today we are breaking and today we are with the cast and about. No, you can't. No, you don't them. interfere with either again. of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when Dennis when Dennis meet nine in it, can nine you still by the printry, a big yard mm-hmm. with lady. Mm-hmm. And there's a nine he used to hang out. Mm-hmm. And Lady is the man who really sponsored the Westbound Train album. Mm-hmm. Behind that, you know, with Nine, I believe I said. But Nine worked with Dennis, and Dennis loved the spirit of Nine. Mm-hmm. And some of the tune they even have drumming and me if you listen to them you know, with Nine, you know. Mm-hmm. A China, Santa, China and Santa, Earl Chin, and and them did the album for Nine. And it went a far away between the two of them and Nine. That was one of the albums that come like a Dennis and Nine production. And Westbound Train. Westbound Train. Yes. And Cassandra. Mm-hmm. Cassandra promoted. Yeah, yeah, man. Cassandra. Yeah, yeah. Yes. What's that big? And that album, one of the first albums in D. Brown in England, we started to sell really. Mm. To, Castro Music, Castro and Dennis Brown had a record company named Bled Music. And That's Dennis Emmanuel Brown Music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Emmanuel Castro. Emmanuel yes. Castro, but mm-hmm. the Castro named it Bled Music. But you see, because they but, were the two, sorry, Lego, the two commercial, the two commercially successful tune, Cassandra and West Brown Train, mm-hmm. we always talk about them, you know. But, but listen, here, then we have some bad, bad tune, Here I here Come. Here I Come. Yeah, yes. Man. And then, here, here I come again. That is that is one of my favorite Dennis Brown of all times, mm-hmm. which is a song which don't get the same kind of prominence. And thanks to Junior Gang, who kind of make people know about that song, because a lot of us don't know that. A lot of Jamaicans don't know that song. And when you know Junior mm-hmm. Gang do that version of it, it kind of res- bring, bring, bring back, into, bring back, back a, into, a tune. Into, and into, Junior into Gang love Dennis, you know. Yeah. Because Juna Gang said to me, he said, Lego, if I did know about Dennis Brown before, me I tell you the body singer. And I said, What your father? He said, No, I'm not talking about my father love him, I talk about me. I said, I'm going to do the tune. Yeah. 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 But here I come is a signature mm. for Dennis Brown. He yeah, used man. to open it many did. shows. I yeah. mean, you 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 think of Sunsplash mm. and he comes, here I come and he yeah. comes out and starts shaking. I tell you, let's, yeah. let me tell you something now. You see, you see sometimes let me just I wanna get this out. Dennis Brown, as I tell you, remember I tell you say, is a template for everything. Dennis Brown, before Dennis Brown did that thing where him stay off the stage and then the music starts and, and then and he start say, here I come and run out. And run out. Yes. No other artist never used to do that, you know. But every artist do it now. The backstage are check, check, mm. check, 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 check. Yeah, and I sing, sing, and then run out. I remember. And then it's wrong to start them thing there, you know. Yes. And, he, and, and, and he had a good reason to do it because it was a great part of his act. Mm. He had the song that says, here, here I, I come. come. Yes. So him walk on. It's like, it's like Diana Ross saying, <laughs> I'm coming yeah. out. <laughs> I'm coming with love. And not hatred. And, 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 and then when him, when him do that, then just come out and start shaking their hands. Yeah, man. Yeah. Surely. <laughs> um, no, I, I, we, 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 we have to get here <laughs> I come. Uh, Kevin, let's get here I come. <laughs> that was roots. Crash on. Love and hate can never be free. No, no, no. 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 Here I come, just just a piece of here I come. One, you, you know, you have different versions I of that song, mm. and I tell you, that is a classic. If ever there was one, Dennis Emmanuel Brown. He used to. I mean, I mean, at the sun, the sun is is high in the sky in Montego Bay, and you hear the voice coming from the back of the stage and it's here I come and then all of a sudden you see him appearing and people who have waited all night they wait until 8, 9 o'clock in the morning but before, Sun is you, up. You, before you say here I come you just make it known love and hate can, can never, never be friends oh no, no. <laughs> no. Yeah. here I come that's set the tune Dennis you know? Brown <laughs> Emmanuel that's the man you know the artist I know love the Brown, you know. Love and hate can never be friends. Oh no, oh, oh, 
oh no Here I come with love and not hatred Show the goodness and mercy shall follow I All the days of my life Envy no one No wish to be with no evil man come musically speaking Clyde McKenzie here with you and believe me we have assembled a panel of real icons people who know this music business very very well and they know the subject matter we're dealing with which is Dennis Brown Dennis Emmanuel Brown what a man this was he was so talented great voice a uh, rolling stone name him as one of the top 200 voices. In fact, he is in the top 100. Yeah, man. NPR named him one of the greatest voices of all time. Long, Number long time. 67. You know, yeah. this, this, man, this man has a voice like, like Velvet. And we have assembled here people like Dennis Howard. Yeah, Dr. Howard. We have people like Lego, the great Douglas. We have the great Copeland Forbes. We have the great Tommy Cowan, who he was a manager for Dennis for, for a period of time. And, you know, he, he, I mean, all of these people have their own perspectives that they're sharing with us today about this truly remarkable man. Uh, so here I come. That we sp spoke about is uh, reflective of that period with, with, with Nine the Observer. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, yeah. Was there a particular kind of mood, you would say, that characterized that period 
uh, when he was associated with 90. You know, different artists, they, they go into various periods and yeah. stages of their lives. Brown was getting into his own. Uh, the, the period with 90 was very crucial for very Dennis progressive, Brown. Yeah. Very progressive. Very progressive. And, what's, and what's, did it have a spiritual kind of dimension? It was it? getting there. But I think the the, the, the association with, with 90 was, was more of a musical kind of a, a journey, you know, influencing the type of songs that he played. I remember mm -hmm. Nine listen, hearing Here I Am Baby at, at, at Turntable and, and say, listen, I'm going to the studio, I'm influenced, I'm want a want a song that sounds similar to Here I Am. Da, 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 da. That's the same thing on, on Tink, 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 tink. I can't believe that it's real. The same kind of, the same kind of like a vibe. You know? Come and, and they had people like China and Fully and the man. Fully Fullwood, you're talking about. Yeah. George yes, Fullwood, yes. yeah. Uh, what, what, they they were the direction. Yeah, in terms of the spiritual, spiritual part. The, spiritual the musical yeah. part. Of what, it. One second, because we're going to go to the track and then we come back. We're going to pick up on this this portion of the discussion. That phase with 90. This is a version of Cassandra. It's not 90's version, is it, Dennis? Definitely not. This is a cover. This is a cover, <laughs> right? But it's a beautiful. Yeah. Oh, the, the voice. The voice is amazing, man. Right? Dennis Brown uh, at but his best. We want to. We want to clear up a little myth. We've been joined now by the great Tommy Cowan. Blessed indeed. Blessed indeed. I am coming. <laughs> I am coming. In. I am coming. <laughs> you understand? Know, I mean, singer, pastor, um, songwriter, manager, promoter. I mean, he has a lot of, of, of fun in the sun, you know. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Cheers, <laughs> man. Somebody ought to say glory. Oh, glory. Cheers, yeah. man. Cheers, man. Oh, oh, oh. Cheers, man. For the Caribbean. For the right. Caribbean record. TC. Well, that's how they go come in the business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I bring Lego in the business. Yeah. 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 Are, you, are, you, are you bring Lego? Lord, I remember. Singles, but Ingles. Let them kill Earl. <laughs> and get the job. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not what? sure, cause uh -huh. I me leave out a folly, you know. Yeah, but we hear that story. Uh -huh. Yeah, man, when them kill a Earl, man, Earl and them shoot Linky Rye, we was like brother, cause they told me name Douglas. As a holy Thursday. And I had a, on a girl in the street and him ride past it on the bike. And that time Kia Pete, you could have gone down the Long lane, Street, yeah. Down, down Rose Lane. Rose Lane, yeah. Uh, but you, could have, you couldn't drive, go straight to hospital again and shoot him going because water going between downtown and Vikings and Spare and Earl dead. And I was a troublesome man them time, you know. And I, really I get my, up? yeah, and I get my two youth, <laughs> oh, them, really? I get my two little daughter, them one of Western Kingston. And I decided to fall for the foolish man, you know. And Julian Jingles asked Julian and say, Leslie Thompson, to Leslie Thompson, work at the Glean and thing. Because I used to get her out of Fali, you know. And I asked Jingles to get her work, get her work there for me. And straight at Dynamics on Amiga Central, when Tony Youth said, I come for the, for the bike, he said, Where are you? Send me a work, Mr. Lee. Come up here for 15 and ride out the bike and Start to work at Dynamics of the Tommy, they make export department. Yeah, man. Good link. This, uh, I'm gonna I'm turn back. I mean, love the music as a youth. I mean, I keep dancing all about as a youth that grew up, you know. History? In, yeah, man. And I'm gonna turn back, man. But, uh, yeah, man, I never forget, man. And, um, and uh, Trevor. Ask Tommy, music carry. The, by the way, you know, used to put you know, the samples them for them record. Me start sliding deep on sliding Gregory, mm -hmm. sliding big youth. Yeah, so man. when the all of them start come back, the people them get the copy of the record and the real yeah. piece and he told and, me that big youth. Yeah. That time I never hear about no big youth yet. Mm -hmm. But this him said, Tommy, you need to get this this youth because he's going to be a star. Mm -hmm. so That's the yeah, name. Big youth. Big youth. Yeah. And then Manly Buchan. Yeah, man, um, and yeah, and how oh, funny it is, you know. Right, like like Gregory is the man, you know. Cause Gregory said Gregory, him look after D Brown, you know. Cause I remember him do a tune with D Brown and him a press it. And one man him said to me, say, Let go, go for D Brown, cause we live at Dwayne Park and me a carry down D Brown on the bike and go a Queen Street. <coughs> and Gregory does come out and give him a hundred record him and Gregory said to him, say, What is for? Gregory said, Are you for producing yourself? The record, are you for selling one thing? 
As a DB on starting, one thing now, you know. Yeah, man. Then big youth love Dennis to come. Remember, 77, big youth to get the go to go England. A man named Tony Buller, more sent for the youth. And then one to next himself, a Dennis Brown. And I said, if Dennis Brown now come, then there's nothing with you, know. And him send Buller more, them go deal with Joe Gibbs. It was a nice tour, very nice tour for the Brown. Right through proper. We get proper living conditions. Proper, 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 the Ebron love it. And I saw me and the Ebron get closer now, you know. Because oh, I'm I take care of the things. And certain things never I take care of two Joe Gibbs then with my youth, whether England or the both of Joe Gibbs. And I say I'm say Lego, anything me I do, you know, why I take care of everything, you know. Alright. And I saw it's not work. Lego, um Dennis, there hmm. is a myth that Bob Marley is the man who called Dennis um, the crown prince. Now, in point of fact, Bob Marley was a huge fan of Dennis Brown. Yeah. But you and I know yeah. that it wasn't Bob who called but him. But everybody know that yourself. We, we yeah. all know, but we're yeah. just saying. Yeah. We're, we're just saying yeah. that it wasn't so. Yeah. Uh, but listen, so Bob never even did call himself no king. No, because really. he would have called himself any king. But Bob was just a humble man when yeah. he was doing thing. And yeah. know his thing. Yeah. I know his status and know his importance. That is another thing. Bob knew who he was and knew the, the power that he had. Two people tell me that Bob, when he was a little boy, when he was known as Red Robbie, Ken Booth and, and, and Alton Ellis, independently when I'm interviewing them and having con conversations with them, he said the first time they meet Bobby, or Robbie as he was known at the time. Mm -hmm. He said, oh, my music will rule the world, you know. And, and, and then Ken Booth said, man, I must drop off him my chair. I said, I want to listen to you here. What do you mean the music will rule the world? Well, where well, that well, come well, from? Well, skill call same where that a, come from? Skill call same was a, it was a, it was a seer. You know? <laughs> he could have yeah. seen, he could have seen well, the future. Where that come from? It, Ken Booth said, well, listen, we are struggling with this music. I would never know if it going to reach anyway. And this one here, I tell you, he said, I'm going to rule the world. Alton Ellis said, in a studio one, him give him him, him, him guitar. It was a, a Coxon guitar. Where uh -huh. them used to, all of them used to play it. And Bob take it and take it over and nobody can get it for use. Him same day that one day, you know, the, you know, ah, the, you know, the, you know thing. Yeah, yeah. Him have it and him say, yo, my music are all over, you know. And, and Alton I say, yo, you have ambition. And see there? So Bob did always know who him is, but he never called himself no he king. He wouldn't have not. So and him just saw Dennis Brown as his favorite singer. Yes. You know? So to, to tell us, let, let us, let us um, find out now who was the person who... Again, with like most things in this situation... You have a hundred different stories. Not, but only two that make close to anything that makes sense. We know somebody in here Used to call him on st on, on stage, the the crown prince mm -hmm. of of reggae, and 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 that became one of the signature for Dennis Brown, and his. Who's that? Mr. I am coming, yes, Mr. Yes indeed. Yes indeed, yes, I am coming, <laughs> Tommy. But yes. also from a journalistic perspective, the person who is known, and anybody can check the Gleaner archives and see the writings of G. Fitz Bartley who also used to call him the crown prince of reggae. G. Fitz Bartley, a man who I used to call Joe Fitz Buckley. Yeah, <laughs> you know, one, one, of the, one, of the, one, of the, one of the pioneers among Julian Jingles Reynolds, Bob West, and later down people like, like Basil and Howard, mm -hmm. Howard, 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 Howard McGowan, mm -hmm. who were the, 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 and we can't forget even before them, what the, what the man who used to write, he was also a singer. These are the entertainment journalist people. These are the men who used to write about the music. I, I can't remember his name now. He was even he was in the sixties. But is 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 the cat the Julian, G. Fitz Bartley and them people there but used to write about the music. But Copeland Copeland benefited significantly from yeah, G. From G. Fitz Bartley. Yeah. yeah. Because him start him basically start Copeland's career in, yeah. in, in, mm. in America. It was yeah. so surprising when a man Skill Cole was talking about it at Dennis's team. And we reminisce on some of the incident, you know. Mm. Um, that it, oh, we reminisce at some of the things um, that we went through. And it, G. Fitzpatrick was spearheading all the things. He got me into the Apollo. Mm -hmm. That I become a regular member going to the Apollo. It don't cost me anything. And I talked about that time when I had to pose as a writer from the Philadelphia Enquirer, Dick Green, to go and pick up tickets to go to the Jackson 5 show. 
you know, me, Skill, and, 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 and Fitz. So Fitz played a very great role in, in getting me and Soul Train. I couldn't have gotten on Soul Train. Mm -hmm. If it was because of fits, yeah. I am at the Apollo doing some show with a 14 year old German from Jamaica named Slidon Bar in a band named Skid Flesh and, and Bones. Bones. Yeah, back, yeah. In, back in Earl Harris's concert, yeah. concerts, yeah. the man thing. And then all of a sudden, this guy come backstage with fits. Fits, oh, this is Don Cornelius, this is Logan Westbrook, and this is um, Johnny Nash, you know, who was called the King of Reggae then, mm. before Bob. Mm. And then they said they want somebody to come to Soul Trade to show America how to dance reggae. And they came to the Apollo and saw us. And that's how I ended up, you know, Fitz Bartley came as my manager <laughs> to Soul Train. So, you know, he played a very, very great role. Look at him in the latter part, him drop asleep quick. I <laughs> 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 the show. Yeah. One of my favorite, I mean, yeah. Howard, we had, we had great times. With yeah, with Chief Fitz, yeah, man, he was a good friend, man. He was a great man, Yeah, yeah, because remember, his father, you know. His father, you know. Yeah. His father was easy. a big entrepreneur. You know, you, know, yeah. you know who told me what his father's, you know, because we, we always hear people talk about Mr. Bartley. But you know who told me because I, I didn't know what Mr. Bartley's yeah. first name was. Yeah. Right? You know who told me what Mr. Bartley's first name was? It's Count. Mm. Count Mock. Yeah. So his name is Cleveland Bartley. Yeah. That's that Yeah, it. that that old block was known as Bartley City. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. Gambling house. Gambling house, yes. bars, and, 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 yeah. and, and for other shops purposes. and all yes, kind of other things. Purposes. Other yeah. Purposes. Yeah. I mean, like Mr. Yeah. Hotel. Yeah. yeah. In, in, the, in the latter days we used we, we used to carry him down. Carry yeah, man, carry him down here to there. Yeah, and when 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 the people would just run out and Mr. Fitz, Mr. Fitz, is everybody running. Legendary man. Legendary. It's for that more three different gambling teams. Tony, let me tell the story of 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 Bartley sending. You know, you know, Fitz is a bad trouble troublemaker. Love spend money. Have all the girls. Yeah. So I'm saying, you know what? I'm gonna give you some responsibility. I'm and I'm saying, send him go Montego Bay, go open a gambling house <laughs> in about three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> the gambling house done. No. No. The gambling house done. Chief, <laughs> it's gambling out and spend half yeah, all man, the money. Man, <laughs> tell me, no, <laughs> Tommy, Tommy, yeah. uh, we, we haven't heard from you in any, any real way yet. We, you, you, you have a perspective on Dennis Brown. I do have a perspective, not a relationship. A relationship. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, so yeah. that's different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so it's not so. Tell me a little bit about, and it's a lot, but tell us a little bit about that relationship. Well, um, I I came associated. I became associated with Dennis probably back in 1966 um, when we his brother Basil was like his overseer, and his his father Arthur was an actor, and the, the little boy started singing. And um, we were doing some tours of Jamaica with uh, Byron Lee and the Dragoneers, was called the Tonto and Tonic Wine Shows. And we were going all over. And the little boy was invited to do the shows. There were some nights, depending on how the stage was, that they had to put him on, on a, a box, box. <laughs> to sing. And the highlight of his shows that time was when he would sing Solomon Solomon was the wisest man. That's a Derek 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 song. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And then um, when he would hit that part that says, Because I'm a little man in this town, <laughs> the place would just Don't. go crazy. Um, I mean, and throughout those years and whatever happened that um, eventually, I mean, after many tours, et cetera, et cetera, um, of association, I became his manager. And I was his manager up until he died. I was with him the night before he died. I was with him on the, on the hospital bed. I was the first person there at, at UE. And um, so, you know, as an MC also, and having the, the Copeland can tell you, that privilege of introducing him on many occasions when I would say something like, Right now we present to you a cornerstone of the music industry. This brother I've been singing from, he was knee high. And so 
The brother before Bob Marley did Exodus had already done a song called No Man Is an Island. Before Toots did Country Road, he had already laid on hit songs such as Westbound Train, Cassandra, a song that's called Silhouette. Indeed, an ever-living classic called um, How Could I Leave, hit songs such as Wolves and Leopards, <coughs> Here I Come, Revolution, we present to you Joseph, as he rides again in his many colors, in his coat of many colors, the crown prince of reggae, Dennis Emmanuel Brown. And so you get one of the vintage introductions yeah, from Tommy. Classic. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> that, that was a very educating part yeah. for MCs. Yeah. I myself idolized Tommy and I used some of it. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, he, yeah. Was, no, he was a touchstone. Yeah. He was yes. a touchstone. Listen, yeah. and remember, you know, back in those days, you know, a pair pop down band thing, and Tommy had to not only introduce yeah, the artist, you know, he must hold up the, the, the crowd. The yes, and so in between, he must <laughs> come out and say a whole heap of other stuff and hold the crowd, mm -hmm. you know. So it was Sun's an amazing, man. amazing, yeah. amazing yeah. thing, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. You know, man. yeah, Sun's Prime. Yeah, Sun's Prime. Impersonate the person. Yeah, yeah. The, the man lives Yeah, me so you used to all do all, I got a dream and all them and things. Yes, there. Martin, Martin Luther, Luther King. King. Mm. You know? Now I have a dream this evening. <laughs> yeah, man. That one day, all of God's children, white men and black men, Protestants and Jews, <laughs> Catholics and Christians, will walk hand in hand Damn. and sing that old Negro so. spiritual, free at last, <laughs> free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. <laughs> no, but, but, but Tommy, what is interesting is that some of the people, I mean, at Cliff, at Toots, uh, at Bob Marley, they were significantly older than Dennis. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because yeah, yeah. many yeah, of these man. people would have been, I mean, no, they would have been in their late 70s. Dennis would have been only 60s. 60s. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What, what do you think accounted for that? Uh, um, Probably. Well, you, you, you mean accounted for the fact that Dennis... I mean, a Bob, a Bob Marley, who was 12 years older, yes. was looking to Dennis Brown and saying, this is my favorite singer. You know what? You know, when a man have a potential in him... You know, two the, I'd say the two of the greatest days in your life is the day you were born and the day you know why you were born. And Purple. Dennis had so much in him. That's why Dennis was at 3 o'clock in the morning in the studios. That's why I believe it took so many producers to get out of Dennis because what he, what the potential that he has is is almost like you know they were saying church today, you can count the, the seeds in a grapefruit, but you can't count the grapefruits in a seed. There was so much in him, <laughs> and he was putting it out, and he had to get it out of him, and there was something in him that he had to get it out of him, and because of this coming to people time and time and time again, you have to stop and take stock of what. Is it? You know, I remember on occasions, I remember at Polis, when they would put on Dennis on a show, the show turned into a dance. You know, mm. I turned into a dance because just to sit and watch Dennis, where are you going to stop? Yeah. You just go and dance. dance. Yeah. I remember Ninja Man watching Dennis Brown out at um, um, the beach, Four Times Four Beach. Times. And when I think Ninja Man thought where well, Dennis gone to him, him catalog now and then it's gone about an hour. Him run and stayed to challenge him like to the hard way. Mm -hmm. And so Ninja do a song, Dennis do a song. So Ninja did a song, Dennis do a song. Well eventually Ninja walk up and Dennis <laughs> just keep singing his song. <laughs> Are you not wrong? Yeah? You know what about Dennis? He never bad mind in both no other bad No, no sir. Yeah. No. Cause he's all exalted and said him better than him and thing. I'm just laugh and say, Chow. <laughs> You know, yeah, yeah. It, it no bother him, mm -hmm. those things not hey, really bother hey, him. A, a memorable performance for me was in Arena, Bob Marley sponsored show for the in, in support of the International, International Year of the, the Rasta, Rasta Child. Child. Yeah. Two shows. And Dennis Brown is closing the, the, the no, Dennis Brown I think closing the, the second the first night. Mm -hmm. Closing the first night. Bob Marley closed the, the, the final night. 
And this man, come on, Lloyd Parks, Andy Bashford on guitar, we the people, mm. Bob Lawal on keyboards, mm. my uh, Devon on drums, Dean, 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 Dean Number, Chico. 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 Oh my God. When the, the man g get, I mean, I no, no, could joke on Corino like how Jamaican artists dra sing their hit song and run off because they want encore, mm. force encore. This man had the crowd in arena rum. Yeah, man, every time, man. Six encores. Me walk out after, 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 after must about the, f the fifth one. Him just, him just come on every minute and then one at a time, him come on, take calm the guitar and strum yeah, it, yeah, yes. strum it and play him guitar. And do you know yeah. what it means to have yeah. a place burned down? Yeah, yeah but me never see them, me not, a very few people me see them things there. Yeah, but, but but Dennis and Tommy and gentlemen, um, you, Tommy, you, you you talk about his purpose, but many would argue that he might not have fulfilled the enormous promise that he had because of certain approaches in terms of his punctuality and issues like that. You wanna you wanna any of you wanna address that? Well, it's one thing I can tell you. Um, to each man his own and each man sets up um, and to say the, the fulfillment of you know people think that your fulfillment mostly is what is done materially and not spiritually but why are we here speaking about a Dennis Brown because your success is never in you your success is in your successor and we are successors People like George Nooks are successors of um of, of a Dennis Brown. And people like I would Richie still Stevens. say Richie Stevens, yeah. Maxi Priest, yeah. Freddie yeah. McGregor. Yeah. He yeah. influenced yeah. and impacted a generation of musicians. Generations. And it keeps going. <laughs> yeah. So to say that he has not fulfilled. Talking I about mean, Spice. his fulfillment yeah, keeps going on yeah. and on because I want to feel that this year, in the 60th anniversary of Jamaica, that this is one of the most influential years of Dennis Brown in his history. I've never heard so many Dennis Brown over the last five yeah, years. Dennis I Brown, mean, he's played so much. Dennis and when Brown you look at it, this Trevor here was also very responsible. Is where Dennis Brown Berry? Yes. National yes. Hero. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Lego, I want, yeah. I, want, I want the backstory, if you can, give that um, to how that That's happened. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm just saying this to since, show you. Since Tommy has brought that, it up. You know, I legacy. Me like them yeah. I mean, I tell you, but I'm thinking of it. Every time well, I think of it. I love Dennis more than know. cook food. It's a youth, call a youth spiritual and clean in a certain way, you know. Every man has been part, you know. Yep. He's not a perfect man. See, oh, him, I know him prob him had a problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the morning when I hear say D Brown died on a girlfriend of mine called me. I said, Stop talking foolish. He said, Yes, Lego, D Brown dead. <clears throat> I said, let me say I'm king. I said, my name come out of the house, you know. I pay D Brown a play upon the radio, I play D Brown. Well, eventually, we had decided to tell my my baby. But me know what the phone said about. Me personally know that. So I called Freddy, I called Tommy, I called Berries, I called, who again? Junior. Herbie Miller. Did they call and thing, and yeah. come, come together. Some people never night and some people night. People in night. Miss Grange. So we start. Um, so well, we had a meeting at Jamaica, was Tommy was there, Bob Zay, Jonah Lincoln, a few other people, Dennis, Dennis Brothers and thing, and Mr. Bonnie Goodison was in charge at the meeting. And them say, the government want to get some sponsor, where Dennis will be We say, Evil Circle, George V, Tone Moore, and Race Coast. Adam Iron Street. <laughs> because those four names that I call was well, they said the same place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had the town more cycle yeah, track. Right, mm. right. He had the bull yeah. most for wool most stop. They said where the oh, kids them used to run and then race course. Cause they missed school from school and Mr. Mm -hmm. Malo, you know. Mm -hmm. So we know the thing, you know. Well, they said must get petitions. 
So I just buy some exercise book, you know. Said <laughs> Tivoli, Alman Town, <coughs> Garden, Rima, Jungle, and go collect back the books them. Because them say we have to get petition. Mr. Patterson and Mr. Siaga was behind it. I can tell you that. And when I drop it up at Jamaica House, on the counter, them say, well, after me said the petition, them people are right to them left and them straight and them two <laughs> times, three times. <laughs> and them say, we asked for a state funeral. Them say, we couldn't get a state funeral. We get a semi-state funeral. We satisfied anything, you know. Because satisfaction, a part of it, we satisfied to it all come to you. Well, the date, the date, the date make and everything say in February. So, the morning, the Thursday before the burial, Sir Freddie, you know, you know, because Freddie is an intricate man, night. You know, because we, we, all the man, you know, the man, him love Dennis, you know. Up at Dennis' yard, tonight, Bonnie Lee sponsored the liquor. Freddie sponsored the liquor the next night. Barry Salmon, Robert Livingston. It's all these people, you understand? Mm-hmm. Spons, say, well, come and say, why, why we keep up this thing up at Dennis' house and thing? And everything go on good. So, the Thursday I called Freddie and said, MacGyver, he's not hearing none from the people. I said, no, I said, all right. Because Freddie up to it 100% tonight, you know. So, we go up at U.S. Circle in the morning, and all of the prisoners, them, I said, let go with the people. He said, yeah, but, so we're there to them, because they want help, you know. The prisoners, them want them to come help, you know. So, the grave never dig. <laughs> So I said, MacGyver, drive, Freddie said, where are you? I said, we are drive, man. And we drive, and Freddie said, we are drive. I said, drive, Freddie, I'm coming up a Walton Park Road. And Kasha Park Road, eh? and when I look across the road, you see some crane in our yard, in the old Sambrera Club. <laughs> oh, yes. But then it used to sing, yes, yes, King, I'm going there. And go to the office and say, we let a, we want to um, a back over to come dig a grave for the ground. The man said, Dennis Brown, oh, you, follow them man here. He's <laughs> <laughs> a love of the Brown. Yeah. And I saw we go up, they go dig the grave. When you dig the grave, we dig out the one beside That's the right. Mass Ranberry. <laughs> the <laughs> Mass Ranberry. So, <laughs> them come. And when them come, they, the people them from the museum and the town clerk at that time. With that man so, what are you doing here? <laughs> no. So them, no, them come and say we are digging and say, be careful. No, them say, oh, we're going to dig. I'm saying, bury them, I'm going to bury <laughs> But anyhow, yeah, so, I'm ask around like I'm slow, I'm going to bury this. So back, back, woman, mm-hmm. shiv it up back. And you dump up the hole. Like, <laughs> and dump up the hole and go yeah. over and go dig. So they go over here, so, beside Aggie Bernard. <laughs> yeah. Aggie Bernard. Aggie Bernard and Capo. Aggie Bernard and Capo. Bury uh, yeah. this, so. See? And them dig out the hole. <laughs> and the prisoner, them come and do them can do. And you see the Friday, people in my jungle, a Greenwich Park would bring ta- them bring brick, them bring tile, them bring everything, steal everything and we start steal up and then the government them come and I say where we are doing say we Look at what I say to them. And because me and the town clerk man get up and I lay the city because she said, Oh, where we like a lot of people never like the idea, you know. Yes. And they shouldn't like bury up there. And well, they wanted to come. claim that it was a little bit too close to what to do. No, program. we slow. Mm-hmm. Mass run, bury us up. Mm-hmm. So we dig out the one, but when them come, my complain, oh, we say. The wrong spot. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, I say the wrong spot. I say, I say, no, all them are going to bury now, but anyhow, <laughs> in this kind of man, I say, oh, we're going to dig place, I'm going to get not tired. I right? say, anyway, I hear a circle in my bury. <laughs> So see the whole eye, see that? <laughs> but when we look, Mr. Marshall, we say, back home, man. Should be talk back. I'm afraid of it. I hear some Miss Lou, I'm going to bury it. You say, Lego is a law. Lego is a law unto himself. And the court laughs. It's a law, a law unto himself. It's a little bit of Musical is speaking. You're hearing history that like you've never heard it last. before. That is a rusty court <laughs> last to go for. And dig it out. But I'm going to show the court last. I'm going to have it still, you know. A man take it up with me and go and say, Rasta, you know, history this year, you know. <laughs> this year, you can clean the place to Dennis Brown thing. God Almighty, you know. 
And <laughs> musically speaking, we're going to we're going to we're going to take a break. We're going to 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 go we're, we're, we're going to the track. <laughs> when we come back, we we'll hear more about Dennis Brown from people who knew you, you, you hear you hear the kind of people we're talking about here today. And we're going to be joined later by Jack Scorpio, a man who produced songs for Dennis and had a relationship too with Dennis, musically speaking, going to the track. Money in my pocket. A 90 wholeness production, this one from Joe Gibb. Mm. Uh, it, this is what we would call a transitional song for me. Yeah. Because you would agree, Dr. Howard, it's mm. transitional because that was when Dennis was making that transition into being that major, I mean, going into the a &M period. Yeah, but this, this is his biggest song ever mm -hmm. in terms of being on the chart in, in the UK and, and everything. Yeah, so I'm big, I'm big, big tune. When, in England, this is a song that they know him yeah, for. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is a song. It's a big tune. So I wouldn't even call it a transitional song because it was a groundbreaking song Wrong. for him. Well, it, well, it, it put him in, it, it put him in yeah, a different, yeah. Yeah, different category. Definitely. Yes. Yeah. But let me, let, let, I mean, Copeland, you, you, you are familiar a little bit with that Joe Gibb period when, when, when I mean, because that was a very fruitful period, but it was, it was a very challenging period because that was also the a and period. Yes, well, before the a and period, this song actually took him to a level where he became one of the first youngest um, Jamaican Top artists to perform at Mantra Jazz Mantra, Fest yeah, yeah. in Switzerland. Yeah. And he was on the bill with Peter Tosh and Steel Pulse. You know, and the Lloyd Parks and Weed People aggregation, four arms, yeah. two trombone, and, and, and the rest were pumping, and he got anchor after anchor. That was a time where people could see Dennis wasn't just singing, he was playing guitar at the same time. So you could see the star quality in him. So everything started then and started to transcend to higher heights. And then the deal came with AM. One thing, this is very important, people need to know this because I see a lot of artists afterwards get that same kind of deal. But talking about this is the first time, this is the biggest deal. Dennis actually wasn't really signed directly to AM, you know. Mm -hmm. He was signed to Jogi's recording Globe. So Jogi had a producer deal with, with AM. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right? That's how it, it was set up. Right? There are a few other artists that had the same thing too, you know, right? Um, Lucian had the same kind of thing too. Right, he was signed to Exterminate, and Exterminate assigned to Ireland, mm -hmm. and as a protege of something like that, mm -hmm. to where he's labeled and so on, you know. But the deal now that was struck with a and now through Joe Gibbs was um, the Caribbean was ours. Because them time that we yes. can't really have things set up properly, the big companies just leave the Caribbean to you. Yes. It's good, but it became a, 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 something to haunt them now. Because what was happening? And we export the records. Yes, <laughs> yeah. The, the records were say um, made in Jamaica and everything, and they were being shipped out daily. Yeah, and there right. were more novels. Yeah, yeah. Over here. So <laughs> then, right. then it started rising now. Yeah. So Gibbo, being the manager, the producer, and everything, acquired another gentleman named Larry Maxwell, a black American guy who can get him into the big market and so on. And that's when everything started to spread out. Yeah. And that's that's when that's when the A and M deal yes, came into the being. A and M deal well, coming well, at that time. Right. Okay. Um, now I want to put this this thing in perspective. We're talking with again with people who know two of these men are uh, Tommy Cohen and Copeland actually managed Dennis Brown and Lego, uh, and it was here and Lego play all different roles. Producer. Producer. I mean, road manager, road manager uh, everything. Uh, confident. And, then, <laughs> and then you have Dr. Dennis Howard, who knew Dennis from a long time, and he's an ethnomusicologist. And now we're joined also by Jack Scorpio, a man who produced a number of songs. <laughs> the legendary Jack Scorpio, sound system man, who produced a number of songs for Dennis Brown. So you, you, you get the kind of perspective uh, um, that we have here. And I, I'm thankful for Tommy for kind of framing the issue of Dennis's achievements in the way that he did because um, you know legacy is something sometimes that people have different interpretations of and I'm happy how you frame that because it is not just the material success 
and you know the monetary kind of assessments that you have to use to evaluate the the the, the legacy of somebody as important as Dennis Brown. Let's welcome Jack Scorpio. Jack, I mean, you know, there's a little problem with the mic here because there's a slight difference between you and, <laughs> you and me in the height category. <laughs> Good evening, my listener. How are you guys doing, man, to the panel? Well, bless, I mean, bless. seeing so much great people in this studio, it's like, hey, yo, reggae music live on. Amen. <laughs> I'm telling you, this great music, reggae month, and you know the bridge. Oh my God, I feel so delighted today. But I must say, we can't talk about Dennis Brown for the balance of day. Tell you for this. Remember me tell you that because when it comes to Dennis Brown, boy, I have a relation with Dennis Brown. It's unbelievable. It's more like a friend, a family, and also a man who produced him. And we did so much great works together for the little short time yeah, that yeah, he passed yeah, through my yeah, studio and my yeah. little. You know what I mean? Getting mm -hmm. to know him and as I was telling you recently that it ended up that Dennis Brown find out a girlfriend round by my student. <laughs> <laughs> and our son too. Yeah. A, that guy, that Jews is about 27 years old right yeah, now. Yeah. I spoke to, spoke to all his mom yesterday. Mm. Yeah, man. Mm. Audrey, she know I'm talking. I said, listen today because I'm going to mention you. <laughs> show because you was a part of Dennis Brown loving my studio too. <laughs> for, you, know, <laughs> say, you know, for real. And there was a great relationship with him, Freddie McGregor, Gregory Isaac, um, and people like... When Max is out, you Max. Max, I love him. Yeah, Tony, I mean, as I hear talk about Brian and Tony Gold with, mm. with Mikey Bennett. Happy mm. birthday again, Mikey. Where so was his birthday? Yeah. Mikey Bennett. Barry Salmon. Yeah, man. No, this was like, at my studio, let me tell you something. A morning time, when I'm in from it's 10 o'clock, Dennis Brown and Gregory is like, I don't know, them just love round the corner there. <laughs> and we just end up just vicing songs with them. You understand me? Mm. You know, Gregory, I have about three albums with Gregory, enough people don't know that, you know. I have about 17 songs, you know, all with Dennis. Oh, uh, Jack, I remember, I remember the period when he used to be around you. He used to call himself Saddam. Remember that he is them there? I have an album so, named Saddam. He's <laughs> <laughs> on one time for him say, This is Saddam. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> so, the you know, funniest man in the world when it comes to reggae music, Gregory. Gregory, no, man, I'm telling you. Hey, it's when me lose them two guys there, eh? Dennis and Gregory. Boy, apart from my body gone, we can tell you that. Without that, because for the, it was not just as a producer, it was friend and everything. You know, it was like, you know, friends and family. And I must say, boy, me and Dennis Brown sit down one day and um, on my step. i never forget that moment. There was a great moment in my life with the great man. And, you know, you know, we are reason. I only know the love of Dennis Brown. Dennis Brown love is special. I met him the day I talk and I'm going to show you how powerful music is. And when we don't talk as two man and virgin and nice vibes and we just get up and get us get up and go into the studio. And when he went in the studio, the redeem, we never planned for God to do no voicing. We never planned for do nothing. Mm -hmm. We just walk from where we sit down at talk with the, the the vibe and the energy. And when we reach in the studio, the rhythm I play. Right time rhythm. The right time rhythm. I'm young the man called a melody say. Tell me why can't I be, be your friends, friends for, for life? life. <laughs> no, me have to play that song here because <laughs> that moment uh, is a moment in my history. And this is what uh, I would have said. In the last time, I'm biggest one that. of the biggest tunes. Yeah, one of the biggest tunes. Yes, we, within the last part time in, yeah. in life. So I'm going to take a listen. Jack Scorpio Production, Friend for Life, Dennis Emmanuel Brown. You know, the amazing thing is that Tommy, I think, spoke about the many producers that Dennis was exposed to. One of them, obviously, is Jack Scorpio, but you talk about Gussie Clark, you talk about Mikey Bennett, Bennett. you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and you, you can talk about so many. We, 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 spoke, extensive, we, we spoke extensively yeah, of, ni of, yeah. of, of Niney Wholeness. Niney Wholeness. You know, 
and Castro Brown, Castro Brown. Yeah. And, 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 yeah. and you could go on and then Dennis had his his his, his own. own label um DB and Ivan Special can okay, I forget Sly and Robbie Sly and Robbie so yeah. so so yeah. I mean this was uh, in point of fact it, it would seem <laughs> that he Dennis was Tommy, would you would you think that maybe he was one of those artists that had perhaps the most the widest range of producers? They, everybody wanted a Dennis oh, Brown. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, everybody I, I, you, wanted you know, a Dennis Brown. You know something I witnessed? I I was in um, Japan with Dennis Jack, and um, in the big music store, they had reggae, and they had reggae with everybody, including Bob Marley, on in the store as you walk in. And then on the other side was Dennis Brown. And he, that was when I realized that Dennis had like 75 albums at that time. They had reggae on one side and Dennis <laughs> Brown on the other side. <laughs> and and the more yeah. catalog, man. Yeah. And, 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 to be honest, and, you know, yeah. we can't leave our King Jam is enough. The King. Oh, yeah, King. yeah, King. Yeah, King, yeah, King, King, yeah, King, King too. Yeah, 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 some bad tune for King. Yeah, yeah, man. It's magic. Yeah. <laughs> it's magic. Yeah, big yeah, tune, man. big tune. And, yeah. and, and, yeah. and I can guess, you know, also what he has passed on to other persons, you know. Yeah. Because I remember... He was in, in Brazil, and he had called us from Brazil, and he wanted to speak to my wife, Carleen Davis. And he said to her, I need to speak to her, to Sister Carleen. He said, Sister Carleen, there's a song I need for you to sing. He said, what? Yeah, what is the name of the song? Someday I'll go where Jesus is. <laughs> Someday. <laughs> and I'm saying, why did he do that? And then she really went into the studio and do it. So I can just imagine the amount of other persons who he has passed on. Like yeah, I would say, inside of this man, there were so many things and so many yeah. seeds but Clyde, that he had to plant. You look, know? the story Jack told you about, this is how you know that the man is a prodigy and a musical genius. Just by chance, him going and hear the right time with him. And record that particular song with mm. so much powerful lyrics in it, mm -hmm. Bible scripture. Because nobody, yeah. some of the work is a Bible, you know, matter yeah. about it, you know. Scripture. And it's a, it's a rotted love song of no mean order, you know. Bible yeah, Dennis. yeah. Then it's never leaving Bible. Yeah, man, always, mm. always. Dennis, then, Dennis, no kid upon tour. Mm. I, Dennis, if you go in there, you're the man, and Dennis have been falling foot, falling foot, so, and have been Bible. Yeah, we, can't and, get and we, we, that, we, 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 we didn't yeah. we didn't we didn't talk about the twelve tribes of yeah. Israel and, and that, them, that, 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 that aspect. But, but of, I want to tell you another story about a similar situation without him can write song good. They're they're doing sunsplash in Italy. As what is on the 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 the, 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 mm. the thing, mm. them doing a sound check. As what doing a yes. sound check for a song that they have not near called Love Fire. Doom. Mm. <laughs> Do go do go doom 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 doom. So they're doing Promise the sound Promise. check. Yeah. They're doing the sound yeah, yeah, check, yeah. and then it's brown as well. Come up to the sound right. check and I start singing the Promise yeah. Land. The Just Promise and them, Land. And them, and from Africa. And, and them yeah. jam, them jam the song. Yeah. So as what as what them come home now and go to them producer, Mikey Campbell, the late Mikey Campbell, yeah. and say, listen, boy, we did have this. When Dennis jammed this relative tune here, we have to record it. Mm -hmm. But them now have no connection with him like that. So yes. Mikey called him and said, yo, come in. Dennis Brown does sing the song. So it was it was supposed to be, it, it's a pro, Aswad produced song, you know. And then beg Dennis, don't put it out. <laughs> Dennis Brown gets a copy and asks him, come out here. He put it out. Put it out which mm -hmm. is a good thing. Because yes. it connected the song down here. Come on. Yes. 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 He, had, he had visited Africa, mm -hmm. Ethiopia. Yeah, just right, come from there. Just come yeah. From there. yeah, just so come so from there. Yeah. Is mine. And listen to the, the, the lyrics, man. Look for no, no, the lyrics. No, 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 no. A song like The Promised Land. Yeah. I mean, before we go back to, 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 to another Jack, Jack Scorpio song, we yeah. want to hear a little piece, just a little piece, a little piece of The Promised Land there. Aswad and Dennis Brown, The Promised Land. Kevin, we gotta, we, I mean, this is another classic. That's the first time I hear this song. It's down at Jack Ruby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, the Promised Land. Hear it. The Promised Land. Aswad and Dennis Brown. <laughs> Musically speaking, and <laughs> I have here assembled a, <laughs> a galaxy of cultural stars here. Dr. Dennis Howard, 
the, 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 the yes indeed Reverend Tommy Cowan and the great Trevor Lego Douglas, the the the, the, the remarkable legendary Copeland Forbes and standing beside me and making me look a little small. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a man I always I love him. You know I always look up to you, Jack. <laughs> I look up to you more. <laughs> He's a very good guy. Because during the 9 11 thing, they had a thing there. It was on the plane, and a person shouted, say hello to him, say, Hi, Jack! And everybody said, <laughs> <laughs> But listen, no. Copeland, um, the, we, we speak of Dennis's kindness. And I think, well, you, I mean, well, all of you here, I mean, Copeland, you, are, you, are, you, um, you have a, you, you have a story that you tell about Dennis and Gregory, not De Dennis and Beres Hammond. I want you quickly tell the kindness of Dennis with that particular story. How Dennis and Freddie, on a tour, decided that they would split their their fees mm -hmm. in order to make sure that Barris could go on the tour. Tell me. Yeah, tell yeah me. yes. You know, I mean, it may, some people may not like it, but it's a fact that it's in my book. You know, we had a tour booked with um, Dennis and Freddie and Andrew Tosh with 809 band, you know, and everything was set. And then Freddie came to me and Dennis, when the him and Dennis came, I said, boy, we won't carry coach upon the tour, you know, we won't carry coach upon the tour. We said, all right, you know, said it out to the promoter. This was the early 90s. And everybody sent it back, said, listen, this guy is not known in this region, you know, so adding him to, to the bill, it's not going to make any, any difference. You guys are not going to get a dollar more mm. or anything. So if you carry me at your own expenses, and they sat there and they went away and they came back, and then he said, Boss, me and Priest decided so we're going to join up for money together and the split it in a three equal parts. And everybody get an equal share so we can go. Yes. You know? Yeah. And they did that, you know? Yes. And, you know, because you was able to go he on. He was the kindest. Artist. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. I can tell you that you give him money now. Done. You better keep away because he's gonna give it away. Yeah, done. Come back to you and say, Skip, pardon. Skip, <laughs> skip, <laughs> skip. I, I, I know your, your cookie jar will never see emptiness. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, I would I'm a little more. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, he gave away everything. Yeah. You know how I bought him a motor car? I had to hide that money over a period of time and then I gave the car to him. Never, ne never forget. So what is this? I said, I had to keep back your money mm -hmm. so you would have had a car because he gave away everything. Yeah, yeah, but for the people, them take him nicely for weakness, though. Yes, they yeah. take his sweetness for weakness and yeah. his kindness Enough for time. blindness. Enough time. And him know him, but him not never see you go hungry. If you come to him with my money, like me said, the first time him say him pull up in pocket with silver, him go up a sunshine, have a bad in the yard, eat party. <laughs> but, 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 but the, 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 there are stories, I'm sure, Tommy and, 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 and Lego and, 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 and Copeland, you, you would have, where you came close to mayhem as a result of Dennis's behavior. I mean, this, is, this wonderful person, he brought situations that were really incredible. Yeah. I mean... You, you you would have had those kind of situations to talk about. Yeah, well, you know, Tommy shared one of them with me in 1980 you know, when we had a show promoted by Ken Williams at the Beacon Theatre. And this was Labor Day weekend, you know, and it was sold out completely, right? And we heard Dennis is on his way from the Friday. Fitzbarth said, yes, he's coming, you know. And the night of the show, the place was cock. As a matter of fact, Bob was in New York early to, to promote the Madison Square Garden show. And he said to me to tell Lydie to rehearse who the cab fit on another one, you know, because he wanted to come on, because Dennis is a star. And he wanted to come on surprisingly. And so on. And we sat in the theater, sitting there waiting, and then Ken Williams went to the airport to see him on the last flight. And when yeah. Kel called from the airport and said, Yo, the plane empty and there's no Dennis Brown, you know, we didn't know what to do. And then Percy Sutton, from BLS, who, 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 you know, who is this CEO, came over and said, Listen, whatever happened, you guys have to make an announcement, you have to do it officially. Tommy wasn't there as his manager, and then Tommy was there with Juna Tucker, and, as Juna Tucker, and, then, and he wasn't really the official MC. So they said, you have to let somebody do it. 
So everybody turned to Tommy you now and said, Tommy, as a people's MC, <laughs> do you think you are the most perfect person to do it? Tommy said, yeah. I remember three years ago in this theater <laughs> when Jacob Miller, Dillinger, Meditations show, and a man fire gun inside here. <laughs> and come and say, yes, I'll do it. But I need a hundred foot cord, mic, and go to the dressing room at the top. <laughs> right? To do it, you know. Tell me, oh, man, I'll make you sound like you're coward. <laughs> <laughs> or you're just prudent. Coward man keeps on your fights prudent. and run away. <laughs> <laughs> and wouldn't you believe it, you know? Fear We're there now, wondering what to do. Fear. And all of a sudden, this guy in a polka, that suit, come on. He was a member of a group named the Ticklers. He now oh, the GT Tail? Yeah, the Ticklers. Oh, oh, tell me what you want to do. It. I'll do it, man. You know, tell me what happened. I tell him, sir. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you know, we are, we're here from 8 o'clock. It's now quarter to 10, and we have a problem. But Dennis, and him said, Dennis, this is six man raised up in a trench coat and coming to the stage. <laughs> <laughs> and GT did some bam and boy. And gone. But Bob Marley was outside. Right? Yes, Bob, yeah, Bob, Bob was, was outside, outside in the car, and we didn't know, because if we know that Bob was outside, I would just yeah. go up and say, listen, Dennis Bro is not here, but Bob Marley here. Yeah, man, we had just finished oh, yeah. a view yeah. of Europe. Right, so he was there. So, you know, to put in a nutshell, what it really end up now, person suddenly <coughs> come and say, Copeland, everybody knows you and will believe what you're saying. You have to go and do it. I said the 23rd Psalm, Psalm <laughs> 1, <laughs> Psalm 57, everything. <laughs> You but have your Bible with you, though. Yeah, we came up with an idea, remember? We said, okay, all the artists that are there. No, before we get to that, the man who runs the theater come around and said, you guys, this show should start from 8 o'clock. It's not oh, quarter oh, to oh, 10. Hold on. Well, well, let me cut you there. We're going heading to the track. We got this. <laughs> <laughs> These stories are absolutely amazing. What a life Dennis Brown led. <laughs> and what a life you, you guys led. <laughs> Musically speaking. <laughs> Musically speaking, and today we have some real musical heavyweights. Only the bridge could have managed to support them. Nothing else. The bridge is so strong that only the bridge could have really managed to carry so many of these heavyweights. Dennis Howard, Tommy Cowan, Lego, Douglas, Copeland Forbes, the great Jack Scorpio. Clyde McKenzie here. What a show. Danili across the, 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 the glass. Kevin Williams also across the glass. My 910th is right there too. What a show. What a show. Jack Scorpio production, musically speaking. Let me let me tell. Let me tell let me tell let me tell you something. The breadth of production, first class production that this man, Dennis Brown, was involved in is just mind boggling. Uh the the also, I mean, yes, he was late and he he had um attendance issues with his shows, but when he did deliver, he delivered. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was so, so true, true, you know, because it's just to pick up from where we are, right? When the man from the theater came around and he saw us sitting there, fellas, why don't you guys start the show? I said, sir, we have a problem. Tell me the problem. The headliner is in London. Jesus Christ, we are sitting on a bum. <laughs> don't say anything to nobody. Let me alert the police, the ambulance, the fire department, and they surrounded the Beacon Theater. But then he showed up a week later. Bob stayed in New York, went to the radio station, and sat with him over at Ken Williams to do damage control. You know, yeah. and the night of the show, three times the amount of people were outside that the theater could have hold. The promoter last still, you know. Yeah, I got to remote. know my wife over that. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's where Tommy met his wife. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> yes, indeed. So, so, that, so you see, you see, so you, you see, there is a blessing in that there for you, dear Tommy. Right. Yeah, man, D Brown, give my blessing, man. That's where, that's where he found his wife, you know. I know. I was right there. I so, saw everything. Uh, apart from, apart from that. Um, that gift, uh, Tommy, what would perhaps stand out in your mind as your most memorable experience with Debro? <laughs> wow, you know that's such a difficult question to ask, man. Mm. But um, I, I, I want to think my most memorable 
um, situation with him. One was a reggae sun splash show in Montego Bay. And it came to the morning hours and the police had come on to stop the show. And the reason why they wanted to stop the show were now in daylight, it's Sunday morning, and the churches were hearing the sound coming across. And so they said, no, we can't affect the church. And on the conversation, the church sent across and gave us some more time. So they delayed the stop, the service time to start. And, um, and so that Dennis Brown could come on stage. And of course, that night, the night before he died, when I sat with him and he was telling me how beautiful God is. And to know, to explain this, that Dennis Brown read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, yes, a say, chapter yes. a day. Yes. 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 Uh, Dr. Howard, quickly, what is your most memorable <laughs> Uh, experience with Dennis Brown. Television. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a producer, television producer at JBC doing scene. So Caster Brown, my brethren, called me and said, yo, I have this new studio, you know, why well, you do a feature on it, him and Noel Brownie. So I went to go and look at this MIDI studio, uh, latest technology, new near music studio. So, all right, I said, all right, I'm doing the studio, but Castro, I need to do a, 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 a thing on you and the music thing. So while we're doing our recording and we're doing our interviewing and stuff, guess who come in? Dennis Brown and Maxi Priest. So we start chat and hang out and thing. You know, and tell me, yeah, how you doing, my brother? My yeah, brother, yeah, my yeah, brother. yeah, you know. And then uh, Handel Tucker was there too. Hand, so Handel was hand working hand. with with Maxi. with with Maxi Priest mm. for the the album name. What the mm. album name again? Bonafide, Bonafide album. Mm. So we there our vibe, man, chatting and chatting. And then guess who come in? Kojo and Junior Reed. Uh -huh. So me have Junior Reed, Barry Salmon, Maxi Priest and Dennis Brown. Got the bright idea. I said, no nah, man, I can't do something so me have a camera. Go in the studio, go do something. And then um, the, Barry Salmon said, boy, I don't want to do nothing, you know. And then Dennis Brown said, come on, my brother. What do you mean, man? Come, let's go do this thing, man. Yeah, four of them in the studio. And they were doing this song called Why Can't We Be Just Like Music. It's on YouTube if you want to check it out. Mm. Nice. An amazing experience for these guys <laughs> here. Yeah. And yeah. Max Priest talking about the Bonafide album, uh, singing, uh, I, I think it was uh, an, a, a ballad. I don't remember the name, of the, I don't remember the name of the ballad. But that was one of the... That's, and, that's your... That's your and, and you know, what was the most important thing is not capturing it on film, you know, or video, you know. The experience. It's the experience and the vibe and the love that Dennis Brown kind of just, you know, radiate. Lego, I want to hear your most memorable one. Outside, I mean, and you have a whole heap of them, including the burial. I said, oh, oh, I can't tell you one disappointing night I ever had with D. Brown and he was up the night. In a theater in London, and my tele king. I didn't go disappointed at that time, the man nice time. All right. Copeland, mm -hmm. quickly, one, 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 for, one for the road. What is your most memorable experience with Well, you? like, as Lego said, there's so many, but the one that stands out and I will always remember is that when I launched my first independent tour, 1989. He was the one that came and said, listen, I want to be on that tour. And he sent me that I had a series that's run for about 10 years in him, Reggae Superfest, right? And it carried on where then it started out with along with Freddie and um, Stitchy. And then we had Marsha Griffiths, we have the I-Trees, and we have Fella from, from Nigeria. Fella Kuti, the, we're Fella talking. Fella Kuti and yes. so on. So I would say that is something that I will always remember, you know, and... That's your, that's your memory. Yeah, yeah. Your, your special Yeah, one. he made a great contribution to get me doing my own tours. Instead of waiting Jack on Scorpio, time. you have a lot of stories, including the, the, you know, all those escapades down in your corners there. Tell me, what is your most memorable experience with Dennis? Well, my most memorable experience is 
that same friend fella is talking about the year before. Yeah. So, yeah. Let me tell you, you know, that was a moment of my life. Well, anywhere I go in the world, I have to talk about mm. that moment, you know. For it was so natural. Mm. Just as you say, that little moment we are talked, we are both hour, half an hour, and just walk going to this true door. We don't go, forgot to do nothing more, and the rhythm I play. I'm going to hear the man call the melody. Tell me why can't I be your friends for life? No, that is yeah, I'm magic. That. Yeah, man, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not. That is it. And then I have a little bit of memory again, you know, with him and Gregory and I stood up. You know, I do a dub plate for me, you know. Wow. That moment is that moment I will always have to cherish. I have all the song, I will have to touch it still. <laughs> Gregory and Dennis Brown, I will have smiles in that is true now. <laughs> <laughs> We're running, we're running out of time. Can you believe we have spoken now? We've been here for three hours, and we still could be here for another three with these people. Yeah, yeah man. And we could, we could be talking about, and we don't play a lot of Dennis Brown music, you know. We also reason about Dennis Brown. What a life, what a man. An amazing, amazing life. Now, we must remember that this man was shaped by so many different forces. Mm. You know, um, and his experience, there was an uptown influence. I mean, yeah, downtown influence, all the various influences and the spiritual influences because we don't talk about Maya and those Twelve people. Tribe. Yes, mm. and, and all of that. So, it, 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 I mean, to, to really unpack his life is, is an amazing Sorry, thing. Sorry, I forgot to do another one. Yeah. Maybe not in reggae month, but later no, down. No, no, no. no, no, no. The, we used to have one tribute for the Hebrew one. Everybody still asks about it, but there yeah, are tributes all over the place now. Yes, yes. yes. I want to yes. say yes. one thing. Let go. Yeah. Yeah. I want to say one thing for everyone when Dennis Brown died. I'm mean, the first song go down my right and I call the average single play for him. No man who no wants it, you know what I'm saying? No, no man who wants it, you know what I'm saying? No man who wants it, you know what I'm saying? I'm playing Dennis Brown that night. Why me, some man love me like cook food like from that until now. When it's the next time with Dennis Brown. What a program. We give thanks for the life and the music of Dennis Emmanuel Brown. Praises, King. Praises, yeah. praises. Yeah. What a program. Yeah. Yeah. What a program. Musically speaking, Clyde McKenzie saying to you, wow, <laughs> I'm speechless. <laughs> thank you, Kevin Williams. Thank you, Danielia Doyle. I mean, and thank you all of this distinguished panel, <laughs> Dr. Dennis Howard, <laughs> the Reverend Tommy Cowan, uh, uh, Trevor Lego, uh, Douglas, Copeland Forbes, and, and Jack Scorpio. Thank you so much. This is an unbelievable experience, musically speaking. <laughs>